Hello and welcome back to part two of my video process of this snake witch illustration. Over here, I started to play around with a adjustment layer with the curves, so just to see if I can come up with a better color scheme, and also just trying to add some different colors onto my image. I then used a brush to draw on the mask of the adjustment layer so that I can blend the effects a bit better. And then I combined the adjustment layer onto the layers that I have my character on. I did this is because if you do have the adjustment layer and if you want to paint on the same layer, the, the colors will be affected by the adjustment layer and in the end it's not super accurate. Uh, so it's easier to just combine them and then paint over whatever you have. And you can see that I I was still playing around with the color with curve tool just to add a little bit of blue. Then over here, I'm just refining all the um, facial structure a little more. And then I start to work on her hair uh, just to have kind of more texture on her hair uh, instead of it being pure black. I just I wanted her hair to um, have a lot of these braids because in a lot of those tribal cultures, they like to braid each other's hair. Um, and uh, trying to refine the uh, hair accessory a little bit more um, just so that it reads more 3D and it reads less like a cutout on the illustration. So it does save a little bit of time to uh, use the symmetry tool to paint it or to design it. Uh, but in the end, I still have to go in and try to uh, refine the details manually. Yeah, and painting the braids takes a while, but I do like um, the little bit of texture that it's added to her hair. I used to like to render everything on separate layers. For example, I would have her hair on one layer and then her eyes, her facial features on one layer and then her nails on one layer and then her hands on a different layer, uh, necklace on a different layer, clothes on a different layer, skin on another layer. And then eventually I think I was just ended up looking for the layers. <laughs> And it takes me a long time to find which layer I'm supposed to be drawing on. So nowadays I just like to use uh, uh, Control Alt and E. So what it does is that it selects several layers and it merges all of them and create a new layer. Uh, and then I just paint on top of this layer uh, so that it kind of keeps my layer to minimum. Uh, which is what I did for the four layers that you see below. Um, the top ones that I'm working on is just a combination of all these layers beneath. Because I like to keep some of the previous layers just so that if I change something and I ended up didn't like the change, I can go back to what I have done. Uh, and it's pretty easy to you know, erase the parts that I didn't like and then go back to the previous status. Um, but otherwise, I, th I feel pretty good painting on just one layer. And then uh, if I want to experiment with something, 
I create a new layer, and then uh, I just paint on this new layer. And uh, as soon as I like the look of whatever's on this new layer, I then merge the new layer with uh, the pre the existing layer. So I'm just working on one layer, and uh, it's easier to use smudge tool on this one layer as well. Nowadays, I use a lot of smudging tool um, because smudging tool really helps soften some of the sharpness from most of my brushes because I kind of like those square brushes. You can also use Control shift alt e It basically duplicates all the layers underneath and create a merged layer of all the layers underneath. And over here, I started to erase the previous, uh, the stretched accessory from my symmetry tool that I painted earlier and just adding more details. I am basically trying to detail everything at the same time. So I don't stay on one area for too long, but just keep adjusting different areas. Reason for me to keep the snake on its own layer is because it's such an important element to help with the composition. So if I have it on a different layer, I can use the transformation tool to bend its body pretty easily instead of merging it with my uh, character layer. And the snake sort of overlaps with the character too, so it's just easier for me to make any adjustment. And over here, I started to work on the snake. Of course, I have my reference, and I actually have several different snake. Main, one is mainly for the head feature of the snake, and uh, the other ones are more like the patterns on the body. I always use different reference for different areas. And over here, I used one uh, snake scale brush. As you can see, it came very handy. It, it helped me create all these scales pretty easily. Um, this brush set that I have is called Blur's Good Brush. It's made by a Chinese artist named uh, Xue Guo Yang. And if you just search for Blur's Good Brush, uh, you should be able to find uh, several versions of his brush. I basically just have all of his brush over there. Um, and they are really handy, but it's also a lot of brush. I should really organize my brush a bit better, but it's pretty messy. And I spend a long time look for whichever brush that I need. There's probably like three to five brush that I really like that I use um, all the time and there's one or two that I use like 80% of the time um, but whenever there is a you know a brush that I can use for snake scale or flower petals or bricks or rocks it does come really handy but you just have to have the situation to use this brush and then I have to manually painting these black scales for this snake. Uh, and I kind of liked that the black scales kind of looked like her braid. Uh, so it's kind of a element that both the character and the snake shares. Um, it feels that it helped combining them into a set as if that, you know, they are a team, uh, sort of like a story element to it. Then I think for this particular illustration, I wanted it to have more texture, a uh, more painterly kind of look. So I was trying out several different brushes that I don't usually use, like this flat brush. Um, it's handy at some, some areas. Um, but yeah, I was just experimenting around with different brushes and see if they can give me some in interesting brush stroke. And then just trying to clean up uh, different things on different layers because a lot of times I forgot I was on one layer and then I painted on a layer that I shouldn't have. 
Um, and then I ended up just come back to clean up whatever zone, whatever layers. Um, and then over here, I start to work on some background elements. Uh, so supposedly over here, I wanted to have some of these leafy kind of herbs, um, as if she's drying some of these uh, herbs for medicine. And yeah, so just trying to sketch out their location and trying to decide how they work with the composition. Then I started to paint the wall and I wanted to have a some red and a lot of textures in the background. So I used this pretty textural brush that has color dynamics turned on and uh, it just gives me a lot of noise to work with. And this is the end of part two of my illustration process. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.